Which Vault of the Incarnates raid boss is the most fun? Which arena looks the best? This list is not in order of difficulty, but focusing on the overall look and enjoyment of each boss encounter. So let's jump into it. Number 8, Taros. First, let me talk about the arena. It's a large brown circle. There's not really anything to point out or even talk about. It's very bland and unappealing. Overall, it's just a den in a cave. Now, Taros himself, he's a huge hulking elemental boss. He's pretty cool to look at, but unfortunately he is so big that you really don't get to see his full model in action. This is also a DPS race, and you're going to spend more time staring at your bars than the boss himself. His abilities are all simplistic and require very little movement, especially compared to every other boss in the vault. The only notable ability that I do like is the cone attack that is used to destroy the earth pillars. Aside from that, nothing really sticks out for him or makes him memorable. Overall, Taros is basically a tank and spank with a couple extra steps. Number 7. Dathia the Ascended First, the arena. A large floating circle platform. The arena itself is decent, but there's really nothing to look at once you are actually there. The rest of the features kind of blend into the background. The only good view you get is if you stop and look at the platform before jumping to it. Now, Dathia herself, another huge stationary boss, however this boss does require people to be spaced out and paying attention, so you can get a good view of her model throughout the fight. Dathia has her own humanoid model that you encounter with the Primal Council, and for this fight she is merged with an air elemental. You can see her humanoid model floating inside the elemental model, which is pretty cool. The boss model is the main attraction here, as her abilities are very simplistic. However, almost all of her abilities utilize knockback and knock-up mechanics, which do make the fight more fun. It is also fun and enjoyable to watch an unknowing player get thrown off of the platform because they weren't paying attention. These next two were practically too close to call, so they're kind of interchangeable. Number 6. Aranog. The Arena. Looks like an arena where you would fight a boss. It's mostly a circle, but the surrounding area helps elevate it. It's a step up and more satisfying than the last two bosses, especially when you realize that he is the main guard for the gates into the rest of the vault. Aranog himself. The model is completely badass, a hulking, flaming brute with a huge battle axe. Aranog looks very aggressive, and he is aggressive. His attacks are fast, and he's a boss that requires lots of movement. He summons multiple adds that keep you on your toes. This fight can be annoying, but it is dependent on how your raid members play. It's very easy to cover the arena in lava, which makes navigation difficult. Overall, the arena, the boss himself, and the mechanics make this a very enjoyable fight. Number 5. Kirog Grim Totem The arena, a large circle that's split up into different elemental altars. The artwork is really well done here, and it's easy to tell which section applies which element. Once the boss is engaged, the center of the arena begins glowing, helping identify which altar is which element as well. Overall, the arena definitely fits the shamanistic boss vibe. Grim Totem himself, a Tauren Shaman, pretty much what you would expect as a character model. In terms of difficulty, he is the most difficult one on this list so far. Grim Totem is all about movement, and you'll be doing a lot of it, as he's throwing attacks non-stop. His attacks are all elemental based, and they change depending on which altar he's standing. On the fire altar, fire attacks. On the frost altar, ice attacks. The most noteworthy mechanic here is the elemental dominance buff. Grim Totem's attacks get stronger the longer he stays in one altar, thus requiring the raid to pull him through each of the altars. Overall, Grim Totem really keeps your raid on its feet. You have to pay attention and you have to understand the fight. It's an extremely interactive fight and very well executed. Number 4. Broodkeeper Diurna. The arena. A large oval room. The eggs scattered all throughout the arena really complement it. Overall, it definitely feels like a dragon den. The Broodkeeper herself, a really interesting model, a large brooding dragonkin that fits the whole dragon mother style. If you told me there was a dragon watching over eggs, then her model is pretty much what I would picture. This fight is all about movement and ad control. The mechanics here are really fun and keep your raid on the move. The raid has to be split into two different groups, one to manage the boss and eggs, and one to manage all of the ads. This makes it feel like two completely different fights that are going on simultaneously. The most noteworthy mechanic here is destroying the eggs. The boss dropping her weapon and two people having to navigate a beam of damaging energy is really interesting and a fun, fresh feeling. Overall, this is a fight where everybody is taking on a specific responsibility. Defeating a boss always feels good, but there's much more personal satisfaction when every player can feel like they were important in that fight. And Diurna is the first boss in the vault that really gives you that feeling. The top three. Honestly, I really struggled with these, and I went back and forth a few times changing the order, but I found myself to leave it alone and just go with what I have. 
Also, if you're enjoying the video so far, then please hit the like button. It is the best thank you you can give me and keeps me motivated in making new videos. Number three, Razageth the Storm Eater. Okay, let's start with the arena. Large floating platforms that you will be blown onto and moving around. In the background, you can see the vault with the other dragon incarnates trapped inside. Platforms are just big enough to make Razageth feel bigger than she is. Overall, this arena is hands down the best of the raid, Razageth herself. The model is what you've seen throughout the story, a large dragon with some spiky features and lightning crackles. Overall, the model is above average. Personally, I would have just liked to have seen her be a bit bigger with a little bit more of an aggressive look. However, I do like that you can fully and clearly see her model throughout the fight. Definitely the hardest boss in the raid, and as it should be. The raid is required to pay attention as ignoring the important mechanics will almost always result in a wipe. Another fight where the raid is required to split in half and carry out their own responsibilities. Even while dealing with ads, Razageth is consistently harassing the raid, really requiring everyone to pay attention. I want to mention that I like her breath attack being pretty much an instant kill to anyone standing in front of it. That just screams badass dragon. This battle definitely makes your raid's weakest links noticeable. Overall, the fight is extremely well done and feels like a true accomplishment once she finally goes down. I love battles where you are required to fully pay attention, and if you're too busy watching your action bars, you're dead. My only complaint is that it really takes a raid of competent individuals to take her down. One person not taking care of their spark or not being able to avoid a simple breath attack can definitely cause a lot of tension. So I want to make a final note here about Razagath at number three. Honestly, I wanted to have her at number one, not just because she is the main boss, but mechanically, the fight is freaking superb. It's challenging, but it is not broken. Since I was making this list based on enjoyment, I personally roll with random groups or at least pre-mades with people that quote, mostly in quote, understand mechanics. This fight is a nightmare when you have some players that are just not good. More often than not, this is where raids fail, and so the enjoyment falters. However, in a perfect scenario of people that know what they are doing, this fight is easily number one on this list. Number two, Cinerith, the arena, an icy spiraling dungeon, multiple platforms that are connected by smooth ramps. Cinerith being a spider and hanging from the center is what elevates the look of the arena. Overall, a very cool looking arena that's perfect for a spider, pun intended. Personally, this arena is just one point behind Razagas, making it the second best boss area in the vault. Cinerath herself, the model is awesome. I personally hate spiders, so this is hard for me to look at and admit, but she is very, very well done. All of her features are easily visible. Not an overly difficult boss, but the arena interacting with the mechanics does make it more challenging. An icy spider, so you assume slippery and sticky attacks, and that's exactly what she does. Those mechanics are the real spotlight here. The arena itself becomes a balance of sliding on ice and sticking to webs as you traverse up the ramps. Overall, this results in a very fun and satisfying battle. Number one, the Primal Council, the arena. It's a pretty standard circle, but has elemental carvings and features everywhere. Overall, it fits the theme and is the perfect place for elemental beings to just be chilling in. The character models, they all have their own look. They're humanoid models, but they also look like their elemental property. Opal Fang looks rocky and uses earth attacks. Embar has flames and uses flame attacks. Kadros looks icy and uses ice attacks. And Dathia is electrified using lightning attacks. So you're probably asking why this encounter is number one. Well, because of the mechanics. Every boss's ability interacts with another boss's ability. Feeling electrified? Ground yourself on a rock pillar. Feeling icy? Warm yourself up on the lava. Too many rocks? Melt them down with the lava. The raid is constantly juggling debuffs and abilities in order to defeat the bosses. Overall, regardless of your role, you are constantly on the move. You are constantly watching for debuffs and having to react to which debuff you have. And unlike the other fights, even if a DPS isn't really competent enough to handle juggling the abilities, it doesn't mean a wipe, or at least it's not greatly inhibiting the rest of the raid. The arena and the mechanics, this fight is easily the best and most satisfying boss battle in the Vault of the Incarnates. So that's the end. I'm sure some of you disagree or have your own opinion. Let me know in the comments which encounter is your favorite, who should have been higher or lower. Just remember, this is my personal opinion, so I'm not expecting you to completely agree. While you're here, click the like button, and if you like WoW content, then consider subscribing to my channel. If you want to show me some support, you can check out my membership options here on YouTube and on Patreon. You get a bunch more content with that. Links to all my socials are down below. I'll see you guys in the next one.